Hello. Why did I just get up the step? Because I'm in my Sprinter phot Photography Adventure Van. That's my Mercedes Sprinter Photography Adventure Van. You can read about that at windinmyface.com under the Sprinter section. But today I'm going to talk about the 2018 MacBook Pro. I've had this machine for about a month on loan. I won't be buying it, not because it's not a great machine, but because it costs money. Um, Apple has built in the 2018 MacBook Pro the first laptop would ever, at least in my view, that is really a fully capable uh, desktop class machine. It's not as fast as, say, an, a top-of-the-line iMac 5K, but it comes awfully close, and it's portable. So it's worth considering if you want to have one system instead of two systems. Most of my adult life I've had two computer systems, a desktop and a laptop. Today I could get by with this machine only. It'd be a little slower for some things I do, but it's so good and so fast that uh, it's worth considering. I'll just say a little bit on the MacBook Pro itself, and then I'm going to talk about how you turn it into a full desktop workstation. So this machine is configured very nicely as a with 32 gigabyte, oh, 32 gigabytes of memory, a two terabyte hard disk. Four would be better, but it's uh, another two thousand um, dollars, and the top end graphics. Option. All of those things are soldered on and cannot be upgraded. So you need to be darn sure that when you buy one, you get the right configuration. And my recommendation would be not to buy a 28 MacBook, 18 MacBook Pro for any serious use unless you get at least 16 gigs of memory and at least a one terabyte uh, SSD. Um, you could, uh, my all of my recommendations, including the MacBook Pro and the things I'm going to talk about here. Are on, uh, can be found on my website, MacPerformanceGuide.com. Uh, just go to my blog and start looking around for 2018 MacBook Pro uh, or the article section. So let's start out by looking at what kind of things, what would you add to it if you just want to, say, be on the road and have a fairly convenient way of connecting things. Now, Apple and uh, other companies make these little dongles. So if you want to hook up an older style SSD or external drive, you're going to have to connect it to a dongle like this and then plug it into one of the ports. Uh, I like the OWC ones a little better, uh, otherworldcomputingmaxsales.com, because it's a little longer and that's often useful if you want to rest it on something or whatever. But basically they convert a Thunderbolt 3 port to uh, USB-A. That's the standard USB type plug. But a better solution, I think, is this device here. And let's take a look at uh, it. I put in a picture of it on the screen there, too. This is the OWC uh, Mini Travel Dock. And what it does for you is it takes power in here, the white cable from the Apple Power Brick, and it, the power then feeds through the cable to the laptop. But in the process, you get two USB ports. There's one port here and one port there. So, for example, if I wanted to plug in my old style SSD, bingo, I'd plug it into a port and I'm good to go. Right now I have this wired keyboard and mouse plugged into it, wired keyboard into here and then mouse. It also has an SD card slot, so if you have a digital camera and you want to download your photos, you're out of luck with this machine. There is no slot, so you need some kind of card reader. Now it doesn't read XQD and things like that, so you're still going to have to have a card reader for that. But at least with this little handy device, you get two USB ports, an HDMI port if you have an external monitor of the right type, and an SD card slot, and it charges your laptop all at the same time by passing the power through. So th this is a great little device, just really handy to have. All right, so that's a basic bit of connectivity. If you have one second here. Pull it up because I. There we go. I personally, when I travel, prefer to use a little beefier uh, device called the ODC Thunderbolt 3 Dock. And uh, it's tied down on my desk here, and I didn't want to detach it and so on. So I'm just going to show the picture. But a critical feature for me is I actually travel with an iMac 5K, 
and a 30 inch display. To connect that 30 inch display you have to have a, a mini display port which you don't have on this machine and the, and the adapter the Apple adapter or the other adapters do not provide mini display port. So it's a little tricky to connect a regular display to a, a 2017 iMac 5K or a 2018 MacBook Pro. So I use the OWC Thunderbolt 3 dock and it has a, where is it here, a mini display port is one of its ports along with a whole bunch of other ports. So what I do is I latch this thing down to my desk and I, I can just plug into that on the road and I'm good to go just like at home. In fact I have one on my desk at home too. So um, that's a bit of basic connectivity. I want to talk about um, connect, so I've talked about connecting a few peripherals here. Um, let's talk about um, storage next. Storage is really critical for any photographer. Uh, if you're doing any big shoots like I do, I might come back with five, six, even ten gigabytes in one day. Uh, and I want to back download that, back it up, and maybe process and publish some of that stuff. So what do I do with that? The first thing is buy, get an SSD big enough so you can get it all onto the internal SSD. That's critical. You, you want a master copy on the laptop at all times, and anything else is a hassle if you've got to be plugging and unplugging stuff. But I want to now show three classes of SSDs and then some hard drive storage. You're going to probably need some, some of all of these. This beauty and monster, so to speak, I'm, that I'm holding here is the OWC uh, Thunder Bay, which it has four blades inside it and go to, can go up to eight terabytes. Now if I had the budget, this is what I'd get for my travel, because in my hand I got eight terabytes, and that is just awesome. It's awesomely fast, it's Thunderbolt 3, you do have to use AC power, it's got a Thunderbolt 3 port in and out, but that also means you can daisy chain other things to it. For example, this drive, which is much smaller and only goes to 2 terabytes, pretty big, ample for most people, but it could, for example, be daisy chained onto this uh, Thunder, Thunder Blade. So these are both SSDs, both very fast, and you'll pay a premium for these. They're, they're Thunderbolt 3. Top, you know, top grade stuff. The last alternative, and sort of a traditional one, and there are many brands, of course, but I mean, of the ones I have, is this OWC Envoy Pro EX. It takes a standard USB plug. It's reasonably fast, you know, plenty fast for backups and stuff. It has a USB A port. Um, unlike the Thunderbolt three of these, you cannot plug it directly in, so you have to plug it into something like the uh, the uh, mini travel dock. The uh, advantage of that type of SSD is that if you have another computer that is not yet Thunderbolt 3, you can plug it directly into that. Um, and it's just simpler, cheaper, not as fast, but easy to use on a whole bunch of different Macs. So it's good to have one of those. But if I had my choice, I'd, I'd choose this first, at least four terabytes, if not eight terabytes. If I my next choice would be this OWC Envoy Pro EX Video Edition, ideally, which is very, very con consistent, not quite as fast as the non-video edition, but if you're a video shooter, it gives you superbly flatline high performance. And I, I, sh I should say the Thunderblade does that too. They're both optimized for very, very consistent uh, video performance, capture and, and playback. So you're not going to get any glitches or anything. And I've tested and, sh and verified that. Really nice piece of kit. I wish they'd make it in tin plated copper or something cool like that, or maybe silver with gold plating for Blink, the people like Blink. All right, so let's talk about hard drive storage. Oh, another thing. This doesn't work. What do you do with your phone? I charge my phone on my computer a lot. Again, you can just plug it into this. Uh, mini travel dock and, char and charge it that way. You hear it chong there. So this little dock is really handy. And in fact, you can get two of these docks for your for the laptop because it has four ports. So if you need more ports, one option is just to get two of these. Pretty inexpensive way to get four ports for this laptop. Okay, so let's look at some hard drive storage. This is sort of a must-have. Um, 
let me flip to that. Uh, da, 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 da. There we go. This is the OWC Mercury Elite Pro, um, other world computing, OWC. You can get it at maxsales.com. It's a very nice metal case. It has an, uses an external power supply, standard USB 3, with a USB plus one port, which means you can plug another USB device in. What I, what I like about this is the, the case is great, but what I really like is I, I have a 12 terabyte hard drive in here. And on 12 terabytes, even though I'm a photographer and have been shooting for many years, I can fit everything I've ever shot on this drive, which means I can take it all with me and I can back up to it and so on. And it's, you can see it's, it's pretty compact and easy to use. Again, it's AC power though, not bus powered, so you got to uh, AC power. Well, incidentally, that's not a problem for me in my van because I have a 10 kilowatt battery system. You can probably see a red battery down there. I've got two of them. It's a, a lithium iron phosphate. They won't burn up like lithium ions. So I don't have any problem with AC power. I have dual 2000 watt power inverters on here. So I can power all this stuff on the road. Again, read about that at uh, windinmyface.com. So this is kind of a must-have. I, I think it's so much of a must-have that I actually have two of these on my desk at home, and I alternate between them for backups every single day. Super handy. So, now sometimes uh, you want more. This is an OWC Thunder Bay. Uh, Thunderbolt 3 edition. Maybe I don't have a picture it up there, but okay. It's uh, it's on my website, MacPerformanceGuide.com. What this uh, guy does, it has a lockable uh, front. I often just leave it off. There's four drive bays in here. Let's see, pull one out. Come on. There we go. So you can just pull the, pull the drive out. These are, I don't know, 8 terabyte drives. I use, I've standardized on 12, but this is one of my backups. So you can pull these out and just thumb screw them in. So why would you want this? Uh, you've got a, a laptop, right? Why do you want this thing? Well, if you want to come home to a docking station type situ situation, you might have this sitting around on your desk at home or in your sprinter van. And you can download all your stuff to this. And, it can, and, and also it can be RAID 5. I had some Thunderbolt 3 issues recently. There are various bugs, it seems, in Mac OS and other places. With RAID 5, if a drive goes down or there's some problem, there's extra parity data that keeps you from losing something. So instead of a RAID stripe where all the drives are zebraed together, RAID 5 actually uses redundancy to make sure you don't lose data. So I highly recommend that in the OWC Thunder Bay 4. And this is a Thunderbolt 3 version with two Thunderbolt 3 ports on the back. And it looks like it will actually ha actually has an HDMI port as well. Handy little feature. So I have five of these. All right, so that's kind of, how do you put all this together? Well, my main advice would be get a well-configured laptop first. That would be at least 16 gigs of memory. But I really strongly recommend 32 if you're doing video or if you're a photographer who actually does quite a bit of computer photography work, you know, Lightroom, Photoshop, stuff like that. Go to 32 if you can. I would never go less than a terabyte on the SSD. It's, that's just a bad idea. You're going to, you cannot, what, well, you can buy um, extra storage. You can't go back and replace the SSD internally. So go to at least one terabyte. And I, I really strongly recommend two terabytes internally which will then match up beautifully with a 2 terabyte uh, Envoy Pro EX Thunderbolt 3 external drive if in case you want to back it up or keep a clone of it. Add some storage, something as simple as this if you need it, but you probably want to buy two or three of these because you'll need one master copy and at least, at least one if not two backups. And go to the, the whole full-on Thunder Bay unit uh, for high volume storage up to 48 terabytes. Um, so that's the system. Now what I didn't mention yet was the display. So what's going on here? This is a LG 5K and I'll, uh, this is again in my uh, blog at MacPerformanceGuy.com. It's a beautiful display. I got it because I wanted to see is it as good as an iMac 5K or at least 
pretty close? And the answer is yes and yes. Uh, I hooked it up, sold around between my iMac 5K and this screen, and I, I'm sold on this display. It's really nice. Why don't I use it? That's there, You can read on my blog about pixel density and evaluating images. I use a 30-inch display for my own reasons. But if you wanted to work like you have a desktop system, this is a great display to use because it plugs in directly. This cable comes from the display. It plugs in directly. It is a Thunderbolt 3 display. It also has three USB-C uh, style ports on it, which is another handy feature. It's uh, a pretty good deal, although the way I would put it is you can buy an iMac 5K, uh, which is a beautiful screen, and get a free computer for a little more than you can buy this display. But if your goal is to have a sort of a combo laptop, desktop system where you can take the laptop, say on an airplane, and then come home and plug it back in, or take it, you know, use it in the front seat and then come back to the back of your Sprinter van and plug it into a display, then this is a this is an ideal scenario because you can plug it in directly to your to your Thunderbolt 3 Mac, iMac 5K or or a MacBook Pro, either one. So uh, that pretty much sums up how I see this new laptop. I, I'll say again, I've uh, had my gripes for a number of years about Apple's laptop offerings. This one has some negatives. Its keyboard still makes, I slip on keys and hit the wrong keys. It's still, I think, a, a really re regression in keyboard quality as far as usability. Uh, my 2015 MacBook Pro keyboard, I've used them side by side. I'll take the 2015 any day. So that's a real negative, but I get around that. If you want to use a desktop system, plug in a real keyboard and a real mouse, and you can forget about the keyboard on the laptop. It's just not an issue. Um, there's two Thunderbolt 3 buses with four ports, so your port selection is good. When you add in expansion, you're, you're good to go. Um, you can charge this laptop with various 12-volt uh, chargers in a vehicle also. Um, we test, I'll be testing one soon. Watch my blog for what I find on that. And, and so it's very easy to charge this machine on the road and, and not run the power. All right, and uh, what else I forget to say here? Yeah, so this is the page for my uh, in-depth review of the 2018 MacBook Pro. Uh, there's a bunch of tests here, my approach on, and then there's blog entries. My approach on, on testing is real world. I don't do Geekbench, I don't do most of that stuff. What I do is I put it to the test doing what I actually do. And that's really the only thing that counts. It doesn't matter what Geekbench or some benchmark says. It just doesn't matter. So most of my tests are actually real world tests. Some of them are benchmarks I've written that mimic the real world tests, so I would call those real world. So go to my website, macperformanceguide.com, to read all about the 2018 MacBook Pro. Go to my website, windinmyface.com, to read about my Sprinter Photography Adventure Van. And uh, go to digloid.com to read about photography. And I think that's about it, folks. Um, I guess that, that's the day. Go uh, read more about, about it on my website. Oh, I forgot to mention. The Thunderblade, this bad boy, actually ships in this case. There's an OWC label on the back. So it ships with this hard case with a nice soft padded interior. It's a serious piece of kit. Uh, get one if you can afford it. I'd love to have one. But it's, it's rather expensive because it's built for video pros. Okay, Lloyd Chambers signing off.